This is Musings of the Shy podcast. I'm your host, Erosia Shy. Hello, this is Erosia Shy once again with another episode of Musings of the Shy podcast. Uh, this is episode 141. Uh, here we go. Bips involve a segregated witness. On this episode, uh, this is the beginning of our segwit week in which we are going to discuss uh, both uh, segwit 2x and use activated South Fork, which BIPs those involve uh, for both of them, uh, kind of define what SegWit is, and talk a little bit about uh, the second half of the New York Compromise, which is a raising of the block size limit to 2 uh, megabytes. Um, <clears throat> but before we cover, um, you know, SegWit, um, SegWit 2X and the user activated South Fork, we need to kind of once again, go over the BIPs that are involved in segregated witness. And I'm just going to cover the BIPs and their abstracts here. Um, but I'm not going to necessarily define uh, what SegWit is uh, because I want to be want to make it very clear when I talk about these BIPs so you have an understanding when, when I talk about user activated soft fork and uh, the, the, the New York uh, consensus uh, uh, SegWit 2X. When I talk about these BIPs, I don't have to kind of redefine them each time. And there is actually a difference between both uh, segwits uh, in and of themselves. So it's important to kind of have an understanding what these BIPs are. But before we talk about this, and before we talk about uh, them at all, um, we need to do the news. So this article comes from Deep.Web. It was written by Tamir Sami. And it's uh, Linalis, the first blockchain Base anonymous package delivery system. Uh, shopping in the real world gives one chance to maintain their privacy by using cash, thus revealing no personal data such as one's name, address, etc. Uh, Obsidently, shopping online mandates providing all sorts of private data for billing and or shipping purposes. Even though cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin have provided a revolutionary private billing solution be enabling pseudonymous transactions, Anonymous shipping of purchased merchandise is still a problem that's yet to be solved. A re- recently published paper presented a novel blockchain-based system for delivery purchased goods called Linotis that has been proven through experimental trials to offer buyers anonymity, fair exchange, and seller buyer un- unlinkability. The system is inspired by t- Tor onion routing approaches, which are used to promote anonymity across the Tor network. Moreover, Leos utilizes blockchain anonymity and decentralization in order to provide soon Linonis delivery of goods is almost impossible to trace back. Linonis also utilizes smart contracts to be the consensus mechanisms to oppose fair and disputed transactions between trustless contract world parties. An overview of Linonis. Linonis is a physical delivery system that relies on the blockchain technology to preserve the anonymity of both sellers and buyers. The system implements a package routing approach via several delivery companies. Uh, Linonis is a combination of three elements. One, an interface that relies on blockchain smart contracts to intermediaries the process of delivery of items in a fairly anonymous means without having to rely on an intermediary or third party. Two, a web-based service to advertise and register potential delivery companies that can offer the requested service. And three, contractual applications to monitor the state and progress of smart contracts and inter- interactive accordingly with them as per the contractual party's role. The creators of Linotis define the function- functionality of the system's smart contract and other off-chain elements while focusing on minimizing on-chain operati- operations to reduce on-chain execution of code to minimize gas and danger. So they're going to basically use uh, the Ethereum network. On the other hand, they analyze the security of the basic elements of the system according to anonymity, fair exchange, unlinkability between buyers and sellers, and unauthorized pickup. A working prototype of one smart contract is implemented as a proof of concept in the form of open source project that is available at the GitHub repository. Uh, the do- the anonymous delivery system is designed on the basis of, of an operational threat model that provides the following features. A. Fair exchange, the anonymous package delivery system is moderated by the means of decentralized smart contracts that guarantees fair transmission of funds to both sellers and delivery companies and that the right package to deliver to its pre-intended customer. B. Buyer's anonymity. Customers need to reveal any private information other than the pseudonym to any of the contractual parties, i.e. sellers and delivery companies. C. Seller buyer eligibility. Any Contractual party will have knowledge of no more than two hops of the package routing trip, which renders it almost impossible to link the buyer to the seller. The smart contract used by Linotis is an Ethereum-based smart contract written in solidarity. In solid, solid, solidarity. 
<clears throat> Solidarity. Uh, the smart contract enables customers to choose the route through which the package will be shipped via group of N of uh, capital N of uh, lowercase N delivery companies of his or her choice. Each chosen delivery company, the customer will prepare an encrypted message to include a tracking number of his or her choice along with the address of the next delivery company, concealed by another tracking number of his or her choice too. All text is sent, sent, is sent encrypted via the smart contract, so the tracking numbers will be only meaningful to the customer. In other words, all information regarding the packing package shipping, shipping route and number of delivery companies will be concealed, except for the customer and each two consecutive delivery companies. The recent rise in the price of Ethereum, Ether, gra Ether gas price has risen too. To execute a smart contract on Ethereum's blockchain, one must pay for the con uh, computational resources expenditures throughout the process by paying Ether gas. To minimize Ether gas expenditure, uh, Linonis is designed to minimize on-chain code execution by leveraging off-chain solutions. Uh, Linotus is by far the first attempt to provide a blockchain-based anonymous packaging delivery system. If this system comes into life, dark web marketplaces will be the most to benefit from it. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens, you know, they just release a white paper, uh, they have one proof of concept of this happening on GitHub. Um, we'll check in and see where things go. I think there will be more of these, or attempts of these um, going on within the block space um, as a solution to package delivery. I know one company that could easily benefit from this is Open Bazaar. Because uh, one of the things about Open Bazaar is, you know, it's decentralized, it's using Bitcoin as a payment system, may potentially allow for other cryptocurrencies. Um, Open Bazaar 2.0 will integrate, I believe, shape Shapeshift, allow for the usage of Tor to connect. But delivering in packages to be like a global platform it's probably the biggest hurdle of this usage. You still have to use the postal system, FedEx, UPS, or any of those type of delivery systems. So that can be a little bit diffi difficult because you have to do, deal with customs, um, especially global stuff. So having this type of uh, delivery package system that would benefit for something like a very small, because well, Bazaar is now a very small marketplace, but eventually will grow, would be very helpful for a type of decentralized marketplace like that. And other decentralized marketplaces that may come online, like you know the shadow marketplace, which um, it changed into something else. I forgot what it changed into. Um, come online. A revised tax effort from today in Japan, giving residents access to global markets by Bitcoin.com, written by Kevin Helms. Uh, Bitcoin exempt from consumption tax in Japan. The Japanese government government has approved the exemption of digital currencies such as Bitcoin from consumption tax. The Cabinet Order of Partial Revision of the Order of Enforcement of Consumption Tax Act went into effect on July 1st. Bitfire explained that effective July 1st, 2017, virtual currency transactions or purchases slash sales would become exempt from consumption tax. Uh, the Japanese consumption tax rate is currently 8%, which is scheduled to increase April this year. However, on June 1st, 2016, President, Prime Minister Shinoz Abe announced that the rise of, in the consumption tax to 10% and the introduction, introduction of the reduced tax rate will be postponed until October 2019, uh, Japan's external trade organization detailed. While the revised law abolishes consumption tax on digital currencies, there remains other taxes such as personal income tax, capital gains tax, or corporate aid tax that they are subject to. If income obtained from virtual currency is earned in the, at the individual level, this is per Japanese transaction standards treated as miscellaneous income and subject to tax on aggregated income if higher detail. For corporations, it's treated as um, operating revenue. The wider uh, implication of removing consumption tax. Uh, Bitfire CEO Yuzo Kano told Bitcoin.com on Friday that having no consumption tax on Bitcoin in Japan will lead to three significant considerations. First is that users will no longer need to buy more expensive Bitcoin so Japanese users can send BTC abroad without paying a price gap to the bay. In addition, uh, Kano explained that it will have a psychological positive effect on the Japanese people since the cryptocurrency will be seen more like a real currency. Nonetheless, he reiterated how Bitcoin is a legal method of payment under the Japanese law and not a currency. The third and most important consideration, Gano believes, is that Bitcoin exchanges will be able to buy Bitcoins abroad. It is very important since resident exchanges have been taxed for buying virtual currencies, BTC, and altcoins for non residents. Japan will have the access to the global markets. Australia removed uh, Bitcoin double taxation on July 1st. On July 1st, Australia also enacted legislation that led to less taxation. 
Less tax, less taxation of digital currencies. Australia's GST or goods and service tax is equivalent to consumption tax in other parts of the world. To explain easy GST refunds and network of professionals to provide a GST refund service globally. And after over a year of promise, the Australian government finally announced in its 2017 to uh, 18 budget that digital currencies will no longer be double taxed. From July 1st, the purchase of digital currencies will no longer be subject to the GST, allowing digital currencies to be treated like money for GST purposes. Previously, Australian consumers using Bitcoin would find themselves paying GST twice, once on the purchase of Bitcoin itself and the other on the use in exchanges for other goods and services that are subject to GST according to the budget. So there you go there. This is a bit of breaking news, so there's not a whole lot of details out, but... Uh, this is from Brave New Coin, fourth largest Bitcoin exchange, Bit by Thumb hacked for billions of won. So this is by Luke Parker, came out um, today, July 4th. The largest Bitcoin exchange in South Korea by volume is by Thumb, which was, was recently hacked. Monetary losses from the compromised accounts have started to surface and are quickly reaching to the billions of won. With a reported 75.7% share of South Korea's Bitcoin market volume, BitThumb is one of the five largest Bitcoin exchanges in the world and hosts over 13,000 Bitcoin worth of trading volume daily, or roughly 10% of the global Bitcoin trade. The exchange also hosts the world's largest Ether market. While trade in the South Korea one currently makes up the fourth largest cryptocurrency market for Bitcoin, uh, trailing the US dollar, Chinese yen, and Japanese yen, the, the one market is Ethereum's largest. And, and BitThumb accounts for, for around 44% in South Korean Ether trading. A cyber attack late last week resulted in the loss of billions of won from customers' accounts, according to a major local newspaper, the uh, Kayong Shin. Uh, one victim claimed that Bitcoin is worth 10 million won and his account disappeared instantly. Hackers succeeded in grabbing the personal information of 3,800 uh, BitThong website users, including their names, mobile phone numbers, and email addresses. The exchange claims that this number represents approximately 3% of the customers. The breach was discovered by Bit. Uh, um, on June 29th, it reported to authorities on June 30th. More than 100 bit uh, thumb customers have since filed a complaint with the National Police Agency Cybercrime Report Center. While admitting to being hacked on their website, bit thumb maintained that there was no direct access to funds stored on the exchange. Nonetheless, many customers are reporting their digital currency wallets being empty. The exchange further claims that the breach was made to a personal computer belonging to an employee, not the exchange's internal network servers nor digital currency wallets. The employee PC, not the head office server, was hacked. Personal information such as mobile phone and email addresses of some users were leaked. However, some customers are found to have been stolen from because of the deposable passwords used in electronic financial transactions. While victim accounts of exactly how their funds were stolen have widely differed, attackers appear to have stolen enough credentials to begin a process of voice phishing where the scammers call victims one at a time and pose as a rep representative of BitThumb. One victim claims that the attacker posed an executive bit thumb and phone saying that he was suspicious of a foreign hacking transaction and instructed the victim to give him an identification number written on a letter from bit thumb. The number in question was the victim's one-time password, or OTP, which granted the attacker immediate access to 10 million young, worth about 8,000 summer USD. The exchange posted a notice on the website stating the compensation, compensation for personal information leakage case has been decided. The company said they would pay up to 100,000 won per person, currently worth up to $870 to members. Further damages will be compensated as soon as the amount is confirmed. They also claim that they immediately reported the hack to three separate agencies, the Korean Communication Commission, the Korean Internet Security Agency, and the Supreme Prosecutor's Office. However, the Herald reported on Monday that about 100 victims are expected to file a class action lawsuit against Bitthumb. It is unclear clear whether the exchange will be legally responsible for lost funds, even if the damages are proven. The situation is... Complicated by the lack of regulation regarding digital currencies in South Korea, which has not been recognized in any way. The Korea Herald will report that a set of bills is being prepared by Rep. Pa Park Young Hee of the ruling Democratic Party of Korea. Uh, the bills aim to revise the Electronic Financial Transaction Act and give cryptocurrencies a legal standing, including Bitcoin and Ether. A similar process was recently completed in Japan, which legalized Bitcoin payments on April 1st. The mining bill states that only companies with a capital of 500 million won or more sufficient professional manpower and computerized equipment are allowed to receive digital currencies in Hanoi. There will be also be reporting regulations on anyone earning income from trading digital currencies. So I'm pretty sure that this will have some fallout. Um, there will be probably no doubt more 
articles come forth with. Um, again, I, I'm not understanding with exchanges you hack how these vulnerabilities are still happening within this space. But again, if you don't control your private keys, you don't control your currency. And then I'm not going to read all this article, but it's a very interesting um, self post by John Holman Kiss that um, where he breaks down looking at the top 70 altcoins by the problems they're looking to solve. Um, so here we go. My perspective. I definitely think we're in a huge bull market right now. Everyone's excited about cryptocurrencies in the future of digital decentralized assets again. But all things come to an end and we will face another pullback and a lot of psychological suffering in the months, um, years to come. Look at the vast amount of altcoins tokens out there and they're almost impossible to give each one time to properly research. It's why a fairly simplified method to verify whether a coin is worth the time to research before, before I understand how it works and how it will achieve this goal. I, I, I try to understand a simple question. What problem does it solve? So without further ado, here are the top 70 altcoins by market cap summarized by the problems they try to solve. I might have missed the mark on a couple of altcoins. If you think I misjudged the problem they're aiming to solve, leave a comment with one or two lines summary of the problem on our review. Bitcoin. Problem is aimed to solve. The world economy is too connected and long term and that's unstable. Bitcoin is a long term investment vehicle. Separate from fiat based instruments, it's disconnected USD hudge. Ethereum. Problem is aiming to solve. Shortest term, the need for a platform to issue ICO tokens and sell them with smart contracts. Mid term, legal contracts are inefficient. Long term, AI overlords. A Litecoin problem. Originally, ASIC miners pushed out GPE miners for Bitcoin. Recently, all the drama of Bitcoin is making people look, look for a backup Bitcoin. Ethereum Classic problem. Ethereum shouldn't modify the network to refund losses to those who create faulty code. Code is law. Uh, Dash. Digital currencies should be consumer friendly, and there needs to be a process built into the network to allow to fund both marketing and development of consumer friendly products. Uh, Monero problem. Payments or decentralized networks should be anonymized. Ccash problems. Payments on decentralized networks should be uh, anonymized. Goal. Problem. People should be able to rent out their idle computer time for any variety of tasks. Uh, decentralized supercomputer. Can't rent out your computer power yet. Still an alpha. Dogecoin. Bitcoin doesn't have enough memes. What happens when your dreams come become memes? One of the earlier joke currencies has a great community behind it. Factums. Problem. Storage of critical items should be decentralized onto the blockchain ledger, especially to keep indisputable evidence of an audit trail. Also a decentralized storage provider, but focus more on creating an audit trail for digital documents. Uh, GNOS, uh, problem. Centralized betting platforms are centralized, expensive, and open to manipulation. Decentralized predictive market bet with real money on outcomes. Made safe coin, problem. Storage of critical items should be decentralized into the blockchain letter uh, and to end encrypted decentralized private cloud. Basic attention token, problem. The entire average Advertising industry is plagued by fraud and no one profits, except the ad publishers, who's starting to hurt too. That enables users to also profit for the time spent viewing ads. Um, and then it kind of goes on and on with all the different types of coins. Um, some are repeated, some solve the same problem. Um, here's the end note. I might have missed the mark on a couple altcoins. You think I misjudged the problem I even solve? Leave a comment with one or two lines. Summary of the problem and I'll review it. Nothing in this article should be considered advice of any nature. Do your own research on whatever you buy. This is not a financial nor investment advice. All opinions are my own, and these are stated as opinions and not facts. So it's just a very interesting read and, you know, very interesting perspective on how to look into the cryptocurrency space. You know, what is the problem they're trying to solve? And is that a coin worth your, your time and space and money? Um, to pursue if if maybe it's not really solving any type of problem. Maybe it's just exists to exist and maybe that's not a, enough to invest your time and effort into. So it's just a nice little viewpoint. Um, there's a link in the show notes. And that's it for the news. On to the BIPs involved in segregated witness. So here we go. Um, these are the BIPs that are responsible for um, getting segued into the Bitcoin protocol. They begin with bits that deal with kind of locking the uh, SegWit um, into the system. So begin with BIP8. Uh, BIP8 is version BIPs with guaranteed lock-in by Shallon Fry. 
This was developed uh, February 1st of 2017. The abstract. The document specifies an extension to BIP-9 that introduces an additional, additional activation parameter to guarantee the activation and backward compatibility changes. Further called soft forks. Motivation. BIP-9 introduces a mechanism of doing parallel soft fork deployments based on repurposing the block and version field. Uh, activation is dependent on a near unanimous hash rate signaling, which may be impractical and is also subject to veto by a small minority or non signaling hash rate. The specification provides a way to optionally guarantee a lock in at the end of the BIP 9 timeout, and there, therefore activation will still allow, allow a hash rate supermajority to trigger activation early. So you can get activation to happen before uh, the BIP 9 times out, if you will. So BIP-8 and BIP-9 deployments, um, backwards compatibility, should not share concurrent active deployment bits. Notice that only implement BIP-9 will not activate a BIP-8 soft fork if the hashing power threshold is not reached by the timeout. However, those nodes will still accept the blocks generated by active nodes. So they're going to still be able to function in, within the uh, network, if you will. So this is kind of a, BIP-8 is kind of a work around if you can't really get the, the high consensus that BIP-9 is. So BIP-9, what is it? Version BIP with timeout and delay by Peter Will, Peter Todd, Greg Maxwell, Rusty Russell. Uh, this is uh, developed um, October 4th of 2015, abstract. The document specifies a proposed change to the semantics of the version field of Bitcoin blocks, allowing multiple backward compatible changes, further called softworks, to be deployed in parallel. It relies on interpreting the version field as a bit vector where each bit can be used to track independent changes. These are tail, tail, tallied each recharging period, and once the consensus change exceeds or times out, there's a follow pause after which the bit can be reused for later changes. So, you can make a proposal for a soft fork. You have to do it within a designated period. Um, everything is counted to see whether or not this is getting activated, and if it doesn't get activated, then it drops from the network. You can't keep it in there indefinitely. It just kind of drops and goes away. Uh, but it can be reused for, for, for later changes, but you have to wait a while before you can re-implement it into the, into the system, if you will. Motivation. BIP34 introduced a mechanism for doing soft work changes without a predefined flag, flag time stamp or a flag block height. Instead of relying on measuring minor support indicated by a higher version number in block headers, and relies on comparing version numbers as integers, however. It only supports one single change being rolled out at once, requiring coordination between proposals, and doesn't allow for permanent rejection. As long as one soft fork is not fully rolled out, no further one can be scheduled. Uh, so this allows for multiple changes to occur at a time. Um, it's kind of changing that bit 34. In addition, th bit 34 made integer comparisons, a consensus rule after its 95% threshold was reached. Uh, this indicates other downsized approaches upgrade every upgrade permanently restricts a set of allowed inversion fields. This approach was later reused in bit 66 and bit 65, which further remove uh, inversion 2 and 3 as valid options. As we, we should refer, this is unnecessary. Uh, so we kind of get into the technical parts. Um, we're just kind of sticking to the basics here. So support for further changes. Uh, the mechanism described above is very generic, and variations are possible for future soft forks. Here are some ideas that can be taken into account. Modified threshold. The 1960 threshold of BIP 3495% does not have to be maintained for incarnate, but changes should take effect on the, on the warning system in the account. In particular, having a lock-in threshold that is incompatible with one used for the warning system may have a long-term effect since the warning system rely, cannot relay on permanently detectable conditions anymore. Conflicting soft forks. At some point, two mutually exclusive soft forks may be proposed. The naive way to deal with this is to never create soft forks that implements both. But that's making a bet at least one side is guaranteed to lose. Better would be to encode the soft fork X cannot be locked in as consensus rules for the conflicting soft fork, allowing software that supports both but can never trigger conflicting changes. So it allows for things to happen at, at the same time, but once one gets implemented, you can't implement the other one just quite yet, if you will, especially if they conflict with one another. Multi-stage softworks. Softworks right now are typically treated as booleans. They go from an inactive to an active state in blocks. Perhaps at some point there's demand for a change that has a large number of stages with additional validation rules that can enable one by one. The above mechanism can be adopted to support this by in interpreting a combination of bits as an integer rather than isolated bits. The warning, uh, the warning systems are compatible with this. 
So rationale. The failure to timeout allows initially reuse of bits even if the soft bark is never active activated. So it's clear that the new use of the bit refers to a new bit. It's deliberately very uh, coarse grain to take into account reasonable de de development and deployment delays. There are unlikely to be enough failed proposals to, to cause a bit shortage. So you don't you're not gonna um, end up tying up these bits, these signaling um, um, mechanisms, if you will, if uh, we have all these different like softworks out there. Um, you're not gonna clog up the system and because you're allowing for a fallow period. The fallow period at the conclusion of the software attempts to allow some detec detection of buggy clients and allows time for warnings and software upgrades for successful softworks. Okay, uh, BIP 62. It is stated that the document is a work in progress and not completely implemented or otherwise is suitable for deployment. It was actually kind of withdrawn, but you're gonna you're gonna hear people talk about this. Uh, BIP 62 consists of software dealing with malleability by Peter Wool. It was proposed uh, March 12th of 2014, so it's one of the oldest BIPs here. Abstract. The document specifies proposed changes to the Bitcoin's transaction fallibility rule in order to make malleability of transactions impossible, at least when the sender doesn't choose to avoid it. Copyright. Uh, motivation. As of February 2014, Bitcoin transactions are malleable in multiple ways. That means a valid transaction can be modified in flight without invalidating it without access to relevant private keys. The problem is for multiple reasons. The sender may not recognize his own transaction as being modified. The sender may create transactions as the spin change created by original transaction. In case the modified transaction gets mined, this becomes invalid. Modified transactions are effectively double spins, which can create without um, malicious intent of the sender, but we can use to make others attack easier. So there's a way to prevent this from occurring. So compatibility really of transactions and new node software version is released, which makes uh, version 3 transactions standard and relies them with their script 6 satisfying the bug rules. A relay of the first version transactions are effective, so wallet updates. As version 3 transactions are non-standard currently, it's not possible to create them immediately. So software can, can check to confirm the new rules, of course, but using version 3 you only start with a significant part of the network. Nodes have upgraded to compatible code. It's tend to mean I want this transaction protected from malleability. It remains a choice of the wallet software. So as a way of preventing this type of attacks, um, again, that this is something that is not being implemented at, at all right now. It was actually withdrawn. But you might hear mention of it in discussions about SegWit. So BIP91 consists of soft fork, reduces threshold of SegWit, uh, MSF, um, uh, Minor Activated Soft Fork by James Hillard. This was proposed May 22nd of 2017. So existing SegWit deployment refers to BIP9 SegWit deployment using BIP1. Between November 15th, 2016 and November 15th of 2017 to activate BIP141, BIP143, and BIP147. Motivation. SegWit increases the block size, fixed transaction malleability, and makes scripts easier to upgrade as well as bringing in many other benefits. Uh, the BIP provides a way to simply simple majority of miners to coordinate activation of the existing SegWit deployment with less than 95% of the hash power. For a number of reasons, a complete redeployment of SegWit is difficult to do until the existing deployment expires. This is due to a, point, uh, a 0 0.31 plus of having many SegWit related features active already, including all the peer-to-peer -peer components, the new network servicing flag, the witness text and block messaging, compact blocks, and preferential peering. A redeployment of SegWit will need to redefine all these and doing so before expiry would greatly complicit the testing. So there's already, before deployment is already out there, if um, we were to change things and um, add things or do anything like that, we will have to redeploy the code and it's just it's just difficult to do really. So this BIP uh, deployment, the BIP will deploy by a version BIP with 80% that is, can be just a desired uh, threshold. The BIP will start time at midnight of June 1st of 2017 and time out at mid, uh, midnight November 15th of 2017. This BIP will cease to be active when SegWit BIP 141 is locked in, active or failed. Uh, backwards compatibility. The deployment is compatible with the existing SegWit Bit 1 deployment schedule between midnight of November 15, 2016 and midnight November 15, 2017. Miners will need to upgrade their nodes to support uh, seg signal, otherwise they may build on top of an invalid block. While this BIP is active, users should 
either upgrade to sex signal or wait for additional confirmation when accepting payments. Rationale. Historically, we've used a supermajority to activate soft forks such as BIP66, which is a mandatory signaling requirement for minors once activated. This ensures that minors are aware of the new rules being enforced. This technique can be leveraged towards signaling threshold of a soft fork while it's in the process of being deployed in a backwards compatible way. By offering non-signaling box during the BIP9, BIP1 segway deployment, this BIP can cause the existing segway deployment to activate without needing to release a new deployment. So it allows for minors to signal and everything to go forward without everyone have to upgrade their nodes, wallets, and things of that nature, or even mining software. So BIP100. BIP100 consensus hard fork, dynamic max block size by minor vote, by Jeff Garcic, Tom Harding, and Dagur. Berg uh, Johnson, uh, June 11, uh, 2015, abstract. Replaces the static one uh, megabyte block size hard limit with a hard limit set by Coinbase vote and conducted on the same schedule as def difficulty retargeting. Motivation. Uh, miners directly feel the effects both positive and negative of any maximum block size change imposed by their peers. Larger blocks allow more growth in the on-chain ecosystem, while smaller blocks reduce resource requirements network-wide. Miners also act as an effective proxy for the rest, rest of the ecosystem, since they are paid in tokens collected for the blocks they create. A simple de deterministic system is specified whereby a 75% miner supermajority may activate the change to the maximum block size each uh, 2016 blocks. Each change is limited to a 5% increase from the previous block size hard limit or a decrease of similar magnitude. Among the doctor knows there will be no disagreement of the evolution of the maximum block size. The system is compatible with emergent consistent, whereas under the system a miner may choose to accept any size block. A miner following BIP 100 observes the 75% supermajority rule and the 5% change limit rule. Excessive block values signaled by emergent consistent blocks are considered in the calculation of the BIP 100 block size harm limit and the BIP100 calculated maximum block size signal is an excessive block value for the benefit of all observers. Then it gets into the technicalities of it. Deployment. The BIP is presumed deployed and active at the block height of 449568 by implementing nodes on the Bitcoin mainnet. It has no effective no effect until a raised value between different between one megabyte is observed, which requires at least 1,512 of the 216 blocks to vote differently from 1 megabyte. Uh, backward compatibility, the first block larger than 1 megabyte will create a network partition as nodes with a fixed 1 megabyte uh, hard limit reject the block. So this will cause a split in the chain, if you will. Uh, BIP-141. BIP-141 is consensus soft fork, segregated witness, Eric Labrazo, Jonathan Wu, and Peter Wheel. This was uh, came up with uh, 1221 of 2015. The abstract. The BIP defines a new structure called a witness as a committed to block separately from the transaction Merkle tree. This structure contains data required to check transaction valid validity, but not required to determine to six effects. In particular, scripts and signals are moved into the new structure. The witness is com committed to a tree that is nested into the block's existing Merkle root via the Coinbase transaction for the purpose of making this BIP a soft fork compatible. A future hard fork can place this tree into its own branch. Uh, it goes into specification. Uh, we'll read about the motivations when we talk about um, say what uh, 2x. Okay, deployment. This BIP will be deployed by versions BIPs BIP9 with the same segwit and using BIP1. Uh, for Bitcoin mainnet, the BIP9 start time will include the midnight 15th, November 2016. And timeout will be midnight 15th of November 2017. Uh, for Bitcoin uh, testnet, the BIP9 start time will be midnight May 1st of 2016, and the BIP9 timeout will be midnight uh, 1st of May 2017. So um, it's already built into the code. There is a timeout um, phase to occur. If um, it's not activated by the end of the year, basically, then it's going to have a follow period where it's um, it's going to take a while for it to be repropagated back into the, the system, if you will. BIP 142 applications address format for segregated witness by Johnson Liu. This is um, December 12, 2014, 2015. 
um, abstract. This BIP describes new types of Bitcoin addresses to support native native segregated witness transactions with 20 byte and 30 type 32 byte uh, program. So the addresses are going to change a little bit all of the segregated witness. This is more of a functionality BIP. To define standard payment addresses for native segregated witness transactions to promote early adoption of the more efficient transaction method. It's the motivation, then it goes into the technicalities, compatibility. This proposal is not backwards compatible. However, an older implementation will report the new address type as invalid and will refuse to pay a transaction. The proposal is forward compatible with future versions of witness program of 20, 32 bit byte. So, um, yeah, this is the new rule, if you will. Uh, here's a, a little bit of the rationale. Uh, so, BIP 141 defines two ways of including a witness program. A data push of 2 to 32 bit bytes, and either what this program output is a script public key. Um, I'm not going to read all that. So, consider that the okay, so drawbacks of Bitcoin addresses are extensively discussed in bit 13. Since then, better payment methods have been proposed or deployed, for example, bit 47, reusable payment codes for a higher gold deterministic wallets, bit 63 is self addresses, and bit 70 is payment protocol. However, none of these are widely adopted as a suboptimal base 58 script public key template address, which is still a standard for the whole ecosystem. But wallets, block explorers, merchants, and exchanges to end users. We believe that the proposed PTWK and PTWS addresses format is the easiest way for wallet services to adopt native witness program, which is particularly important in the context of scaling the compatibility of the blockchain. While PTWPTAH uh, uh, addresses specify the simple payment to a single public key, uh, PTWSH addresses allow arbitrary complex segwit transactions similar to BIP13 uh, PTS addresses. So it, it deals with how the different methodology of how um, wallet addresses are utilized within this new type of system of segwit. And then BIP143, uh, consensus soft work, transaction signature verification for version 0 witness program. This is again by Johnson Liu and Peter Will. This came out January 1st, uh, 03, uh, 2016. Abstract. The proposal defines a new transaction digest algorithm for signature verification in version 0 witness program in order to minimize redundant data hashing and verification and to cover the input value by signature. So this is just the technicalities of the different types of changes necessary to make segregated witness of uh, changing things within the code and, and, and development in order for it to work breaks down to the compatibility. So deployment. The proposal is deployed with segregated witness software at BIP 141, so it's going to happen around the same time. Backwards compatible. As a software, older software will continue to operate without modification. Non-upgraded nodes, however, will not see nor validate the witness data and will consider all witness programs including the redefined SIGOP as anyone can spin scripts. Hey, yeah, and then we're going to talk about that when we talk about SegWit because this is a very big concerned about the non-upgraded nodes and that anyone can spin um, this transaction that is not really protected, if you will. So BIP-144. So BIP-144 is a peer service layer, uh, title segregated witness, it is author is Eric Lobanzo, Peter Will. It was uh, created on January 1st, 8th, 2016. So the abstract is the BIP defines new messages and serialized formats to propagate of transactions and blocks committing to segregated witness structure. Motivation. In addition to defining witness structure and required comments to in future blocks, uh, BIP-141 consensus said with BIP, so it's, it's helping the BIP-141. The new me mechanism may be defined to allow peers to advertise support for segregated witness and to relay the witness structure and request, and request them from other peers without breaking compatibility with older nodes. So basically, if some nodes don't upgrade, uh, it's not going to break the network. So specification, a new serialized format for text messages added to the peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Uh, the serialization has the following structure. It kind of breaks it down here. Of uh, parsing support, this BIP will be able to distinguish between the old and new serialization format without the witness and this one. Uh, the marker byte is set to zero, so the structure will never parse as a valid transaction in a parse and doesn't support the bit. If parser were to see such a transaction would contain, contain no inputs in a single output. If the witness is empty, the old serialization format should be used. 
currently the only witness objectives type supporters in it are script witnesses, which consists of stack bias arrays. And so it kind of gets into technicality. Uh, so it has a relationship to BIP 141, which is important for understanding BIP 144. And it has to do with just formation, the formatting of the segregated witness, if you will. Uh, BIP 144. So BIP 144 is Git block template updates for segregated witness, author is Luke Dash Jr. This uh, came out January 30th, 2016. So abstract. The BIP describes modification to Git block template or Jonas RPC call BIP 22 to support segregated witnesses defined by BIP 141. So again, this ties into BIP 141. Specification, uh, the block template, the template objective is to rise include new keys, weight limit, no, type number, description, total weight allowed in blocks. So it's changing the, the weight of the blocks, transaction, object formatting, and SIG ops. For the template specific, enabled as a rule, the SIG limit and SIG op keys when changing new values is calculated by BIP 141. So SIG ops is going to change under this uh, bit because of BIP 141. And transactions with witness data may all Stop it, Spartacus, now. Transaction with witness data may only be included if the template rules list uh, C BIP 9 includes SegWit. So it has to include the witness data for SegWit for, for order for this to uh, happen, if you will. Uh, motivation, SegWit witness potentially changes the structure of blocks, so previous Git block template specifications is no longer sufficient. Uh, additionally, it also adds a new way of counting uh, resource limits, and so GPT must be extended to convey this information correctly as well. So BIP 147 is consensus soft fork, uh, dealing with dummy stack uh, limited malleability by Johnson Wu. This was created uh, September 2nd of 2016. The document specified proposed changes to the Bitcoin transaction malleability rules to fix malleability vector in the extra stack element consumed by op check multi sigs and op check multi sigs verifies. Motivation. Uh, signature malleability refers to the ability to, of any relay node on the network to transform the signature of transaction with no access to the relevant private keys required. For non segregated witness transactions, signature malleability would change the text ID and invalidate any unconfirmed child transactions. Although the text ID of segregated witness of BIP 141 transaction is not third-party malleable, the malleability vector will change and may reduce the efficiency of compact block relay, which is BIP 182. So the specification, to fix the dummy element malleability, a new consensus rule, null dummy, is deployed to require that the dummy element must be empty bit array. Anything else makes the script evaluate the false immediately. Uh, the null Dummy rule applies to objects, multi-sig, or object, multi-sig, verify, is a pre-segregated seg script and, and also a paid to witness script, hash script, described in BIP 141. A deployment to BIP will be deployed by version BIPs of BIP 9 using the same parameters of BIP 141 and BIP 143 with the name SegWit and using BIP 1. Uh, for Bitcoin mainnet, the BIP 9 start time is midnight, November 15, 2016, and BIP 9 timeout is uh, midnight of November 2017. For Bitcoin testnet, the BIP9 start time is mid, uh, midnight May 1st, 2016, and BIP9 timeout is May 1st of uh, 2017. The compatibility. Uh, the reference client has produced compatible signatures from the beginning, and the null dummy rule has enforced us relay policies for reference clients since uh, version 10 of the code. There has, there has been no transaction violating the requirement being added to the chain since at least August 2015. For all script public key types is an actual use, non-compatible signatures can truly be uh, converted into compatible ones, so there is no loss of functionality by the new client. Users must pay extra attention to the new rules when designing exotic scripts. So when developing APIs and wallets and things of that nature, you're going to have to pay attention to this particular rule and take that into account when um, developing those things. So again, this ties in back to BIP 141 about changing certain aspects of the consensus to make things happen, the functionality of the protocol. Now we're in BIP 148, which is part of the user soft fork activation. So 
BIP-148 Consensus Soft Fork, Mandatory Activation and Segway Deployment by author Sh uh, Shaolin Fry. This was developed uh, March 12th of 2017, abstract. The document specify a BIP-16-like soft fork flag day activation of the segregated witness and a BIP-19 deployment known as SegWit. Definition. Existing SegWit deployment refers to BIP-9 uh, SegWit deployment using BIP-1 between November 15, 2016 and November 15, 2017 to activate BIP-141, BIP-143, and BIP-147. BIP so these BIPs would be activated uh, with this type of deployment. Motivation. Uh, SegWit increases the block size, fixes transaction malleability, and makes script scripting easier to upgrade as well as bringing many other benefits. It's, it's hoped that miners will respond to this bit by activating SegWit early before this bit takes effect. Otherwise, this bit will cause a mandatory activation of existing SegWit deployment before the end of midnight, November 15, 2017. So it's already it's seeking to accelerate uh, SegWit activation, if you will. A specification. All times are specified according to the median pass time, so the BIP will be activated between midnight of August 1st, 2017 and midnight of November 15, 2017. If the existing SegWit deployment is not locked in or activated before uh, the time, this BIP will cease to be active when the SegWit is locked in. While this BIP is active, all bucks must set the, ver the verification header to uh, 3 bits to zero, 01 together with BIP field according to existing SegWit deployment. Blocks that do not signal are required will be rejected. Backwards compatibility. The deployment is compatible with existing SegWit BIT-1 deployed scheduled between midnight November 15th of 2016 and midnight of November 15th, 2017. Rationale. Historically, the PTSH uh, soft fork BIP-16 was activated using a predetermined flag day where nodes began enforcing the new rules. Uh, PS2SH was successfully activated with very few issues. By offering non signaling blocks during the last month of the BIP 9, uh, BIP 1 SegWit deployment, this BIP can cause the existing SegWit deployment to activate without needing to release a new deployment. So, since the BIP um, 141 is already in the core and it's already going on and it can easily be activated or deployed, uh, basically it's saying because the miners are already accepted and downloaded this, this wallet core, if you will. You can use the nodes to activate this um, without causing um, miners to actually be participants, if you will. It can be considered a soft fork and not a hard fork, if you will. Uh, BIP 199, uh, Consensus Soft Fork, Segated Witness, Second Deployment by Shaolin Fry. Uh, this was a uh, April uh, 14th of this year, abstract. The document specifies users activating the software for BIP-141, BIP-143, and BIP-147 using a version BIP with guaranteed lock-in. Miners have been reluctant to signal the BIP-9 SegWit deployment despite a large portion of the Bitcoin ecosystem who want the software activated. This BIP specifies a user activated software, or UASF, that deploys SegWit again using version BIPs with a guaranteed lock-in on time it timeout if the BIP is not already locked in or activated by the timeout. This ensures users have a sufficient time to prepare and no longer require a minor supermajority while still allowing for earlier minor activated soft fork or MASF. Uh, the reference implementation. The reference implementation will refuse to run on Bitcoin mainnet between before November 7th of 2017 and can be run on a testnet and re just test until then. Specification. The deployment was set to service a BIP uh, greater than 5 is a node UA witness deployment. The BIP should only be deployed if BIP 9 SegWit fails to lock in on the active before timeout of uh, November 15th of 2017. This BIP, this BIP cannot be deployed before November 15th of 2017. This BIP will be deployed by BIP 8 with the name SegWit and using BIP 1. Uh, Bitcoin mainnet, the BIP 8 start time will be midnight, uh, November 16th of 2017. And BIP 8 timeout will be of July 4th of 2018. For Bitcoin testnet, SegWit is already active, so no deployment is specified. Uh, backward compatibility. The deployment uses the GPT deployment name SegWit to maintain compatibility with existing mining software. The deployment is incompatible with the BIP 9 SegWit deployment and should not run concurrently with it. So if the rationale, the start time of this BIP is after the BIP 9 SegWit timeout to remove compatibility issues with old nodes. So if the miners don't um, activate with the BIP-9, 
this is, I guess, a, you may say a fallback plan and uses if 8 So before we close out, um, BIP91, which is reducing the threshold for SegWit for a minor activated soft fork. So uh, reducing the signal threshold activation of existing SegWit deployment. Uh, this was written May 22nd of this year. Given the overwhelming support for SegWit across the ecosystem of business users, it seems reasonable to me. This is by James Hillard, who wrote, I'd like to propose an implementation that accomplishes the first part of the very simple proposal independently from the second. Activating uh, segregated witness at an 80% threshold and signaling at bit 4 in that way. The goal here is to minimize the chain split risk and network disruption while maximizing backwards compatibility and still providing for a rapid activation of SegWit at the 80% threshold. By activating SegWit immediately and separating from any um, HF, we can scale quickly without risking a rush combined SegWit plus hard port that would almost certainly cause widespread issues. Um, proposed text, seg signal consensus reduced signal activation of existing SegWit, James Hillward, um, May 5th, 22nd, 2017. Uh, the document specifies a method to activate the existing BIP9 SegWit deployment with a majority hash power less than 95%. Existing SegWit deployment refers to the BIP9 SegWit deployment. So BIP91 is, you know, changing the threshold, if you will, which people have had issues with it because that's why Bitcoin XT, Bitcoin Classic, and even to some extent Bitcoin Unlimited was never um, activated. So people really want that 95% um, threshold, if you will, for activation. So that's a little bit of a cleanup of, uh, about BIP91, about reducing the threshold. So that is it for this episode. It's just, you know, kind of going through the BIPs so we have an understanding of our, where we are, what BIPs are being used and talked about so that we can discuss the difference between um, the SegWit 2X and the user-activated soft fork, uh, the difference between the two. Thank you very much for listening, and to the moon. Thank you for listening. Please rate and review either through iTunes or Stitchers or any of the podcasting apps that you're currently using to listen to this show. Thank you, and until next time. This has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.